Hi there, everybody. This is Barbara Rosconi welcoming you to the latest episode of Growing Social Now. And my very, 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 very special guest today is Jeff Willinger. And Jeff is out of all the people I've worked with, I think Jeff and I have worked on more special projects and events than anyone. And it's always a pleasure to talk to Jeff and how exciting to talk to you today. So, hey, Jeff, how are you? Hey, Barbara, it is great to see you and great to be on your show. I mean, uh, we've been obviously, you know, together for a very, very long time. Yeah, almost forever. Yeah, forever. <laughs> it seems almost like it was forever. social media anyway. So I Jeff, on my hair. <laughs> yeah, and you are uh, from LA. You're repping LA, but right now you are in Chicago. And Chicago. Yeah. So tell us what's happening in the title in town. Why are you there, and what's happening? Chicago, Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am here at McCormick Place. Uh, just absolutely beautiful day, especially if you like 35 degrees and sunny. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved, I took my game out to Southern California uh, a few years ago. Just, you know, I always preach change management to my clients. I'm like, I might as well eat my own dog food. And of course, it's going great out there. But I'm in Chicago this week uh, at a conference called uh, 365 Educon. And that 365 is really around Microsoft 365. And Educon mm -hmm. is really around educating all the amazing attendees that are here at the conference this week. My personal passion is around using Microsoft technologies and SharePoint and really create a culture of collaboration for organizations. And that's sort of what I talk about, especially... Uh, we were talking earlier about communication and the way we're communicating today is different than it was a few years ago. And it's going to be very different than what it is next week, especially with uh, the advent of AI and how it's uh, Microsoft, literally the general uh, release of Copilot, their, uh, um, their jump into the future of work is using Copilot, and it's, it was just released yesterday, literally. Oh, whoa. So this is a super timely interview. So now I'm really intrigued. And as someone who worked in internal corporate communications as a consultant years ago, I helped launch the first intranet for the Fortune 50, for a Fortune 50 company. It was really important to get people talking together online. So tell us, what is the latest iteration? How does Copilot work? So uh, before we, let, let's take a step back and talk about these hybrid work environments that we're all involved with right now. And what I mean by hybrid is, you know, uh, I'm obviously I'm carrying the Microsoft flag. They've really embraced and facilitated this shift to hybrid work mm -hmm. uh, using tools like Teams, although we're on a Zoom meeting today, uh, Teams, SharePoint, mm -hmm. dare I say, uh, SharePoint near and dear to my heart. Uh, and OneDrive to really enable these remote and in-office uh, collaboration mm -hmm. seamlessly. So it really doesn't matter if I'm sitting here in my hotel room or if you're sitting in your home office, the workplace will be a blend of physical and virtual spaces in the future. And of course, Microsoft is you know, heavily, heavily invested in AI and this idea of machine learning. In the future, and even a little bit now, Right, AI will play a significant role in automating routine tasks, offering data insights, mm -hmm. and providing these uh, virtual assistants really to improve overall productivity. Because we have to do it for a reason. We're not doing it for just to do it. We're doing it to improve our our work. I was on an AI panel uh, in Orlando. Actually, I, AI came up, and one of the gentlemen on the panel, uh, I would say, anyone that has a manager or director. Uh, role, uh, you better be looking because next year at this time, you're not going to have a job. And I'm just like, I tried to pull the mic from him. He didn't oh. like it. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh. So like anything else, you have to make yourself invaluable to your uh, first, to mm -hmm. your coworkers and your your current job mm -hmm. and then to your mm -hmm. clients. Um, and uh, I don't think that that's the case. This idea of digital transformation, it's still happening. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon, Barb. Right. right. Uh, we're in this for the long haul. I'm in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be working for quite some time. I'm very passionate, as you can tell, about this idea of transforming the way uh, large uh, businesses, enterprises do business mm -hmm. and collaborate internally. Yeah, that's great. 
So what is the co-pilot interface like? Is it AI or does it blend all those tools you talk so about? Here, I'll give you a great work? example. So uh, we're on Zoom right now, and I don't know, uh, if I think I believe Zoom has got this feature, but I know Teams has got this feature. So we're just on a, a large call, 10 of us talking mm -hmm. about some new project that we're working on, and no one is really a great note taker. Uh, oh, the, yeah. You know, I'm not I a hate that note. job. You know, right. I can type fast. So they're always like, you're the note taker. <laughs> exactly. So Copilot for Teams and Teams Premium now has got a feature where as long as everyone agrees to it, mm -hmm. the, the meeting is recorded. That's number one. If the meeting is not recorded, it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, it, it gets recorded. And of course, you could play it back and listen mm -hmm. to the hour and a half or an hour of a lot of babbling from different people. Or you could use Copilot, and Copilot will give you a beautiful, if you've ever used uh, chat uh, GPT, mm -hmm. uh, you ask it a question, and it spits out beautiful bullet points, mm -hmm. numbers, uh, and what, what Teams does is it will give you a synopsis, and it will recognize our voice. So Barbara was, uh, Barb was um, given the task of following up with Steve on mm -hmm. the Marine project, and Jeff was given the task of uh, following up with uh, Marie on the uh, uh, focus project, whatever it is. So you get you get a summary of what what just happened in the meeting in a mm -hmm. beautiful, uh, beautiful synopsis of uh, summary of what took place with tasks. And we could even add meetings to it. So, Barb, are you free next Tuesday at 9 a.m.? And if you say yes, it recognizes your voice, an automatic Teams meeting will go out to you. It's pretty wow. cool. But yeah. is that taking anyone's job away? No. I mean, all it is is, is enhancing our, mm -hmm. it's it's making our lives easier. At the end of the day, right? It's all about that user experience. I think mm -hmm. about that when I'm in hotels, when I'm in airports, mm -hmm. uh, make my life easier. And as an employee, your job is tough enough as it is. Mm -hmm. We want to make the employees journey, that employee experience, which is what I'm very involved in at work. Uh, we want to make it very easy and um, a delight really to work somewhere. Yeah. And I like what you said before, the goal is really to improve overall productivity. And it does take some of, to me, what it does is it takes away some of that drudgery, you know, of being the note taker or, or making sure that you wrote down the follow-up, you know, so it just makes everything flow seamlessly and just gives people more time to focus on what's really important. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you said earlier that the way we communicate is going to change so quickly. And I know we just talked about Copilot, and it's going to help uh, facilitate uh, meeting interactions and, and really, you know, drive progress in companies. But how do you think we're going to change our communications as, as a society or as coworkers? How do you see that changing? So, uh you know where this is really going to affect? It's going to affect a lot of folks in HR because HR. HR people, in fact, everyone's got their favorite person in HR. I've got the same thing, my favorite person at, uh, with them. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I told you where I work. I work at with them. Uh, we are the 21st largest uh, tax uh, audit and advisory firm in the country. And wow. I'm, uh, you know, we've known each other for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, this is by far the best job I've ever had. And you might say, wow, Jeff, you have worked in a number of different places over the years. Mm -hmm. And I've only been here for a year and a half. What is it about with them that makes it so exciting? I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's tax audit. And I'm on the advisory side as part of the digital team. It's the culture. It's really mm -hmm. culture. If you if you go on YouTube and uh, look uh, and you type in uh, with them culture video, mm -hmm. you will see what really drew me to the firm. When our wow. CEO is dancing in the streets of New York City in his suit to uh, you know some Bruno Mars song, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone is sort of in sync. I was like sold. I want to work for a company like that. And guess what? Now that I'm on the inside. Every day, it's our culture that really keeps us together. And when people talk to me about projects, I always say, you know, oh, Jeff, you're such a techie guy. Yes, I know a lot about SharePoint and Microsoft technologies, mm -hmm. but my projects, Barb, are generally 80% culture, 20% mm -hmm. technology. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you don't have the right culture in your organization, and some companies just don't have it, 
Mm-hmm. It comes from the top though. It can't mm-hmm. just be the worker bees. It's got to be from the top. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's no different. So it's got to be creating that culture collaboration. It's what drew me to with them and why I'm here. Um, I came up with a hashtag with them for life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I love my, I, I love where I'm at but I think I digressed from your original. uh, Yeah, you did a little bit. And so we can get back to that, but just uh, tell me, I I love that hashtag, by the way, could you just tell us, give us like maybe one or two quick examples of, of what makes the culture so different and so fun. I mean, what do you do over there? Do you dance to Bruno Mars all the time? Maybe Taylor Swift every now and then? Or you know, oh yeah, I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely a Swifty uh, before all the hubbub. In fact, yeah. I, saw, I saw the movie, not too, her movie not too long ago, a, a lot more reasonable on my uh, American Express card uh, going oh, to oh, oh. rather than uh, the actual con- concert. Mm-hmm. It was fabulous. Uh, we were sitting next to uh, a bunch of teenage, I'm guessing teenage or early 20 something mm-hmm. uh, young ladies. And they were, they kept on going to the restroom and changing into the outfit that she was wearing. Really? Singing along. And it was pretty epic. And, That's wild. Uh, that was in LA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So if, if you want to go and really have the real Taylor Swift movie experience, I guess you have to go to Orange County. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We didn't have that here in Charlotte, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty pretty amazing uh, to see it, and uh, it was just so cute. I mean, oh, uh, yeah, that, being a dad, a girl dad myself, uh, seeing these young ladies, mm-hmm. I could see my daughters doing the same exact thing. So it was it was great. Um, so uh, well, yes, yeah, so, culture. So that's you. a good that was a good cultural story about what we're and you know even like pop culture that feeds itself back into the corporate environment. So what makes it exciting there? You know, uh, the, the video, you know, just people's attitude. I, I don't know how to explain it, except mm-hmm. they have kickball tournaments where we uh, rent out a fee- a real softball field in Irvine, California, mm-hmm. with an announcer, with a scoreboard and walk-up music. So I think I chose a Foo Fighters song for my walk-up music. Next up, Jeff Willinger. And then they play your little song for you, just like in baseball. That's cool. Kind of cool. They have a food truck there and everyone is together, the partners, mm-hmm. the associates, and you would never know who was who in this company uh, on a day like that. Cause it's not one of those companies where, Oh, be careful. The boss is here. No, mm-hmm. the boss is among us and the bosses are, uh, they're just regular people, you know, and they're mm-hmm. kind, uh, they're caring. Mm-hmm. Um, I give a portion of my, my, my paycheck every week. We've got a, uh, um, a hardship um, committee. And if people come upon hard times for whatever it is, medical or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, they go into that fund. And I want to say they're just hundreds of thousands of dollars in there. I've never heard of anything that in my life. No, my that's... paycheck, part of my paycheck goes to helping people in my company who are part of our family. Mm hmm. I mean, just that initiative alone uh, would draw, it drew me to the firm. I love it. And, uh, you know, it's it's nice when you give back. You know, it's one thing giving to United Way where you think that it's going to a pretty good, mm-hmm. or Susan Coleman, whatever it is, your favorite mm-hmm. charity. It's kind of cool when you're helping out your fellow coworkers that are in need. I like that well, a lot. I do too. And so, you know, it's really the culture sounds like it, it really brings home a lot of uh, heartfelt feelings in a family atmosphere where you have a lot of the family values you have, you have fun, you have pride, you have celebrations. And so that's, that's really sums it up. And so thank you for sharing that. That sounds like a really fun day to go play kickball. So I did want to, I think what you said was when we talked about What's going to happen with communications in the future? You mentioned HR. Is that, and when we look at a company wide, is that the place where communications are going to change so quick, or is it going to be day to day? What if you look in your crystal ball? Where do you see our communications going in corporations? Um, I, you know, HR is the sort of lifeblood of organizations, right? Uh, The HR folks that get the IT side and then the IT folks that get the HR side, Mm -hmm. those are our most successful clients. The more, the the more educated they are, the smart, you know, the smarter they are, Mm -hmm. better. They want to make good decisions and it's no different 
you know, at our HR department, uh, it's a handful of folks that just, you know, they're there for us. They're there when we need them, when, mm -hmm. When we have questions, it really doesn't matter. I see there's a big little glare there with my glasses, so we'll keep those off. Um, but yeah, uh, it starts with HR. It really does start with HR. Uh, and the uh, it, it starts from the day that you that you sign on and mm -hmm. the onboarding process. So having a, a solid onboarding process with an actual plan, mm -hmm. that that's kind of a big thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think the employee experience is it's such a differentiator in the culture that you mentioned is so important. And oh, yeah. one thing I see is I've been talking to people who've been looking for jobs, the companies who don't get back to you at all, you know, or they don't get back to a job seeker and say, thank you for your application. Nothing. I mean, you know, that person could be a great fit later on. So, you know, I'm thinking even the pre employment uh, experience should be a little better yeah i just uh i can't understand firms that don't get back to people um, yeah especially if you took the time to send in your resume and apply it online or whatever it is and yeah. then not getting back to people yeah uh, you hear about it i'd rather get the quick rejection for whatever yeah, exactly. you're doing versus uh not yeah exactly yeah. So anyway, that's all a great uh, look at what you're doing now. And just to roll back the the it's it is throwback Thursday. I don't know when you're listening to this, but 15 years ago this year, there was a little event at the pepper canister in Chicago. And that's the <laughs> night Jeff and I met. And I remember I think the capacity for the place was like 75 or 85 people and we overran it. And it was just an outpouring of enthusiasm for this new shining star social media so uh, we had just a great run with that and so i just wanted to reflect a little bit on the 15 years and i don't know what were your some of your favorite moments you know i will go back to that fateful night for us barb uh and some of my best friends in the world were there that night, including yeah. you, of course, uh, mm -hmm. my buddy, Alan Schoenberg. Oh yeah. Mike Dwyer was there. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Rooney. Uh, it was a great, great night. I, I remember that night because I remember, you know, back then our cell phones were not as good at taking pictures. Uh, it, mm -hmm. You know, the pictures that I have were a little bit fuzzy. Of course, that could have been too much uh, pepper canister. But, <laughs> But it, it was so long ago that the quality of pictures and the iPhone was just not where it is today, of course. That's true, and, yeah. Um, but literally the best, my best friends, Tim McDonald, um, they were all there. Jean, I, I don't know if Jeannie was there, but Jeannie Walters, Dahlia. Mm -hmm. uh, and over the years, uh, the folks that we met through Social Media Club, Carolyn Martin, uh, you know, Amy, um, you name it, uh, and we're still all, you know, it's just that bond, sort of like mm -hmm. going uh, in a fraternity or sorority or taking a class together, whatever it is. Uh, it's, you know, there's, uh, you know, th those days are sort of gone-ish. I don't know, but, it, you know, I don't know. Well, I think it was being on the fun, being on the front end of it. And there was so much excitement because it was so new and to be wrapped up in just that, you know, fervor to get together and communicate and take pictures and socialize. It it just was so fun, a different venue every month. And I think you and I put together probably at least 60 events. So I know there was always like the communications and, and then we had, you know, issues sometimes with the bar, you know, how are we gonna get the, the bills paid? And we didn't even get sponsors, I don't think, mm -hmm. to like after the first two or three years, we get a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there. So I, I really feel like these events almost ran on magic fairy dust. A lot of times we didn't even have any kind of admission fee. I know we finally got around to charging it later on, but um, I just want to thank everybody who came to any one of these events ever because it was the kind of place where you walked in and people were so excited and enthused and happy that, you know, and then they'd post about it on Twitter or X as we call it now. And it was just like this buzz that kept going and going. So, and it was so fun working with you. I always loved watching you welcome everybody and be our MC. And I was like your, your Vanna, you know, <laughs> it was, uh, it was magical. Um, 
Yeah, it was it was uh, magical. You know, guys like Ramon that donated oh, yeah. so much pizza. Uh, I never got tired of it. I never. Oh, got I know tired it was always. It. And people would say, "How come your pizza is better than the delivery pizza?" And no one really had the answer to that question. But it was really good pizza. It was. I mean, I remember running the Chicago Marathon one year, and uh, I think I lost one of my air uh, rubber things. They didn't have Bluetooth back then. So it was like mm -hmm. a hard thing into my phone, my uh, uh, earphones. And I think I tweeted it. And Ramon actually met me midway through the uh, the course because I definitely need music to run. And uh, he replayed, he gave me, I think he gave me a whole new uh, ear wow. uh, set that I plugged into my phone. And it was just because I tweeted it. Now, yeah. if, you, if you tweet something, uh, you know, who knows what happens? I don't know. Yeah, but. it's it's so let's talk about that for a minute. Um, social media has changed so much, just dramatically. Like in the old days of Twitter, you could post a tweet and people would, it was like, you know, you were in a coffee shop. People would tweet back to you or you'd know exactly what was going on. And I, where do you what do you how do you feel about social media now? What platforms do you use? Where do you see it's going? Good question. Uh, like many of us, I'm trying to wean myself off of different uh, platforms. I would say I'm spending most of my time on probably two uh, that are external for my firm. I would say I spend the most amount of time on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Big LinkedIn guy. I was one of the first million on there and uh, never looked back. Uh, and then Instagram. Uh, I think I think we live in a day and age and this literally goes back to when we first started is we like easily digestible content. We yeah. want it, uh, you know, again, easy to just scroll, look at, you know, Facebook got a little bit too much. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook saw the writing on the wall which is why they bought Instagram. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I spend most of my time on Instagram. If I literally had to choose uh, a platform it would be you know linkedin and instagram i once in a while i tweet if it's a really a good post that i'm posting on mm -hmm. um on linkedin i'll also have it go to my twitter account mm -hmm. that's about it and i've got an auto tweet every day uh because i'm a big uh uh sign guy i'm a cancer so uh mm -hmm. every every day i believe that auto tweet still goes out that oh, says, yeah, uh, today's going to be a great day for you or whatever it was. Yeah, that's, that's fun. And, you know, we can't end the, the interview without talking about pickleball. You are the king of pickleball. You have an, don't you have a license plate too that says pickleball? I do have a license plate that says uh, pickleball. I can't believe you got that. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I was very lucky. Uh, I, when I was living in Santa Monica and playing a lot of tennis, when I first moved to LA, uh, one of the coaches there, just a great guy, Mike Schwartz, told me about pickleball and he told me where they were playing. And I thought, oh, I'll check it out. So I went mm -hmm. uh, after work one day and like so many others, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. This is pretty easy. We're outside. It's less running than tennis. It seems mm -hmm. to be pretty social and it seems to be, you know, one of those, uh, sports that's easy to pick up but like so many others very hard to master and yeah. pickleball is no different um it's sort of funny how you know obviously i've been talking about it for a long time and now of course it's very mainstream that's sort of how i feel about sharepoint mm -hmm. you know sharepoint's been around forever and it's not like people love sharepoint they usually deal with sharepoint yeah the difference is with pickleball is it literally can change your life uh, for the better. People have lost a lot of weight playing pickleball. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are a lot of injuries because people forget that they still have to do a little bit of stretching before and after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, people are using muscles that they've maybe never used in their lives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I know it's sad to say that, but you know, hey, at least well, you're doing true, something. Though. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, pickleball changed my life for the better. Uh, I When I'm at home, I play seven days a week. Actually, I was going to play here in Chicago, but it's 35 degrees out. And even the best pickleballs will crack when it's that cold out. So, And there's an indoor gym, but uh, I'm a big Lifetime guy. They mm -hmm. are bringing pickleball into indoors at Lifetime, but 
I'm just going to work and uh, work the Microsoft channel. And uh, then uh, I'm having a networking event tonight, a pizza party in the South Loop that a lot of folks were invited to and uh, should be a good time before I leave tomorrow. Yeah, I wish I was there. I know, it'd be that nice. sounds like a fun night, yeah. Yeah, it should be yeah. good. Well, we covered a lot here, Jeff. I mean, we you know, did, we, we did. More, but I think we did a pretty good job. I so so. Uh, my question for you is, if you were gonna wrap it up, what would your word of the day be? Joyful. Oh, I love it. Joyful. Uh, yeah. the, the, again, on Instagram or one of the social channels, they said, uh, take your name and say one mm -hmm positive you know affirmation mm -hmm. around the, your name and jay is joyful and i had a friend mm -hmm. of mine that used to call me joyful jeff and uh you know there's so much we live in such the best of times and worst of times all at mm -hmm. once mm -hmm. and uh i think that joyful and being kind to one another uh you know joyful slash be kind i did a presentation on being kind and mm -hmm. there's just not enough of that. Uh, it's so weird out there. It's just so weird. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, joyful. We should I love be it. Joyful. How about you, Barb? What's your word of the day? Well, I'm going to go with the joyful and I'm going to stick with that. Maybe I'd add bounteous or something or bountiful joyfulness. That would be yeah, good. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, yeah. Of, it. A a lot, lot of it. A, a lot, lot of it. Man. Yeah. So if people want to get some of that joyfulness from you, Jeff, where can they find you online? Uh, I am the real Jay Willie on uh, Instagram. I'm mm -hmm. Jay Willie on Twitter. Uh, the best way, honestly, I'm one of those guys. I'm going to give you my phone number. Text me 312-622, which is my birthday. Very easy to remember. Yes. yes. 312, the best city in the country, Chicago. 312-622, yeah. yeah. my birthday. And then the all-time greatest basketball player, MJ2300. Text Whoa. me. Or of course, you can link in with me as well. Yeah, Jeff is really easy to get a hold of, and he's very responsive. So, uh, Jeff, just thank you for your time here, and thank you for all the contributions you're giving to the world, because what you do is so important. And I know people go to work, and it's just a job. But if there's a way they can use technology and all the tools that you've talked about to really connect with each other and and spread more joy, kindness and better customer experiences for everyone. How cool would that be? Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Until next time, thank you all for joining us. This has been Barbara Rosconi on Growing Social Now. And thank you again, Jeff. Thanks, Barb.